theater is beginning Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, we're always happy to have him, the lovely, the entertaining Steve Carell. Come on out, Steve. <laughs> Good to have you here. Good to be here. That is a beautiful suit, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, here's a couple of things that I know uh, about you, personal facts that I know about you. You own some sort of uh, a dry goods store, a general store in your hometown. I do. You, you own one of those. You have a, f a family. You have a, a, a boy and a girl. That's right. Um, and you have an artificial hip. I do. Yeah. Um, and I'm most proud of the hip. <laughs> Wow, I am so. I had it done about a year ago. We talked about it. This was before. wear and tear from hockey. Yes, at least that's what I say because it sounds it kind sounds of good. macho. Yes, good. it does. Um, I, it might have. I might have slammed a car door on it. And... <laughs> but it doesn't make any difference. It's hockey. No, it's hockey. It was a hockey injury. Now you're um, all uh, rehabbed and ready to go. Yeah, I, I, I essentially I took a few months off and uh, and it's I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy with my hip. Is it right or left? It's right. Right. And now, watch, look at that. I don't, I don't want to look at that. No, stop that. Fantastic. I don't want to see that. Even, even with a, a, bio, a, 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 a biological hip, I don't want to see that. <laughs> uh, but now, it, you're so fond of it, are you thinking about maybe doing the other one? So you have a... The other one is a little jealous. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's, it's so, I, I recommend it. I rec even if you've got great hips that you should get. Mine is ceramic. It will last forever. Are, are the ceramic ones the ones that periodically squeak? Or is that... <laughs> That's, that was what they told me. They might, they might. <laughs> that was the one downside. Downside? Nothing. That's, exactly. That's what you want. You want to hear me coming. That's right, exactly. <laughs> It's oh. great on a movie set. Yeah, it's ideal. <laughs> you, and he walks to the kitchen. Yeah. Eat, eat, eat. <laughs> now, but is there uh, anything one can't do with an artificial hip that you used to be able to do with your real hip? Oh, I thought you were, were going to say, is there something I can't do? Well, I can't eat with it. But, oh, but with the, the same? Yeah. No, no, it's perfect. You, um, it does set off the uh you know going through it, it, no it doesn't airports no it doesn't it does they see it well it doesn't set it off but they see that oh, there's they something see it they see this right in there and they think oh but they must have seen so many by now that it's not a problem uh, right? you would think but i i still feel weird about it like i have to tell them that i have one oh right. excuse me i i have a replacement hip mm -hmm. and generally they act like i'm bragging about it <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rich Guy. Oh. The big replacement hip. Yeah. What'd you get? Titanium? <laughs> so, Is it so graphite? like. Graphite? Yeah, you just wanted to do it for the fun of it. That's right. Uh, That's right. Elective surgery. Uh, uh, and, and, and um, uh, the, in, ter in terms of the rehab, how long does that take? Uh, not so long, a long time? They don't give you any parameters. They say it, you might feel great in two months mm -hmm. or it might be a year. Yeah. Everybody's different. I heard that a lot. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's different. Everybody is but different. But you're a young man, so that's always on your side, being in, uh, young and in top physical condition. Uh, I'm incredibly healthy yeah. and in top physical yeah. condition. Yeah. And so now you forget you even had it, right? I do, yeah. Did you still play hockey if you wanted? I do. I do play, I, I play hockey still. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. What, now, stop it. I'm, <laughs> for our viewers out there uh, thinking about getting an artificial lip, what is a thing like that run? I got, I got a special. <laughs> <laughs> I... I think it was. I think it was like ten thousand dollars. That's not bad, ladies and gentlemen. No. That's not bad. Hey, to be able to walk again. That's right. I was walking with a limp. Mm -hmm. I w it was not. It was not good. And now we all saw him come out here. And plus, they give you the old one to make soup. <laughs> so it's we're making you know money what? left and right. Actually, my hip marrow is very tasty. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> just Stop a, everything. Just a little ramekin on the no, side. No, I don't want to see mm. that. No, we'll be right back with Steve Carell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Steve Carell.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, I remember when this happened, I think it was 1988, something like that, and it was a bizarre story. Uh, I think it took place in, in Pennsylvania, and it involved <clears throat> the DuPont family. I didn't know much about the DuPont family, except that they were involved in synthetic fabrics and, ch and chemicals and, and an old, old, wealthy industrial family. Right. Uh, and I, we heard about this uh, wrestling camp, and a, a guy got shot, and it was one of those things that was so peculiar that it kind of evaporated. And now you're the star of that uh, story in, in movie form, and the movie is tremendous. You, you're, glu you're glued to your set and to the screen and y your performance. Uh, and, and how did you decide this was a movie you wanted to do? I, I wanted to work with Bennett Miller, and I wasn't campaigning This is the man for who directed it. it. He was the director. He directed Moneyball, mm -hmm. he directed Capote, and I, he's a great director. And I was offered the part. I met with him. We discussed it, and I was offered the role. I don't think I was on anybody. I wouldn't have thought I was on anyone's list to play a part yeah. like this. Well, no, 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 don't be offended by this, but have you really serious, uh, straightforward role like this in your movie career? Uh, not to this degree. Yeah. No, not this dark, um, certainly. I mean, this, th it was a really troubled guy. And I'd never played a real-life person either, so that was different. Yeah. <laughs> And he was a real-life person. Yeah. And, and, uh, no, I mean, like a character, like, like someone I could study, someone I could look at tape and try to emulate and try to uh, pick up cues as to Well, it's a great like. job because uh, for, there's not a second you don't believe you're looking at the guy. Oh, which thanks. is, uh, you know, all you can hope for for the price of a ticket. That's nice God. of you. Thank and you. and uh, uh, well, to take people... Uh, <laughs> take people through the, uh, through the story. Uh, it begins... Uh, we know there's trouble the minute we see you, because we yeah. can, what, what was your assessment of the man's, uh, he was troubled by things? He was. He, well, he was the heir to the DuPont fortune. He grew up in this enormous house uh, outside of Philadelphia, essentially just he and his mother, who by all accounts was a uh, chilly woman. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of love. He, his parents divorced when he was two, um, and his siblings were much older, so he was by himself. So he, he was not a very adept uh, person socially and uh, as he grew older he was just it, it was sad I mean he, he did terrible things but I had empathy for him at the yes. same time because well, well, was what was his guy. preoccupation <clears throat> with uh, Olympic wrestling where where did that come from well he was a sportsman you know he he liked to surround himself with athletes on his farm Foxcatcher they had swimmers and uh, and 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 people who, who participated in, in, you know, uh, horse racing and, and those type of sports. And he loved wrestling in particular, I think, because it was not a sport of the elite. It, it, was, it was a very simple, a very basic sport, a very ancient sport. And it was a sport that his mother did not condone at Considered all. Considered it to be a low sport. She did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, your co-star in, in the film, uh, and it, it, based on the, t the Schultz brothers, right. uh, Dave and, and Mark Schultz, right. both uh, Olympic gold medal winners. Yes. Right. And so he invites both of them to his estate mm -hmm. To, he wanted to start this training facility for Olympic wrestlers on his facility yeah. and set himself up as the coach, which is sort of absurd because he knew nothing about mm -hmm. wrestling. He, yeah. was not, he was not good at it. Yeah. Um, so uh, Bennett Miller describes the movie uh, as funny until it's not funny and then it's not funny at all. Mm -hmm. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's... Wait a minute, are you talking about tonight's show? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, because I'm sitting right here... And I had a technical question. Uh, the, the only apparatus that you use in the film that's not you appears to be a prosthetic nose. The man had a, a large a nose he larger did. than yours. He did. He if had a very large nose. If, if that's possible. Thank you. For yeah. uh, and um, and at, at one I withdraw from this interview. <laughs> at, at, one, at one point... Uh, uh, Mr. DuPont is uh, uh, snorting cocaine, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, holy crap, it's, you, you have uh, a phony nose and you have a straw, how do you make sure you get it, you know what I mean? That, that nose was full of a lot of fake cocaine by the end of the night. <laughs> it was packed.
full of fake yeah. cocaine. But how do you zero in on the straw to get it in the fake nostril? Because you know where your own nose is, <laughs> but, but now you're dealing with an application. You know what? That's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> and in all, in all the research that I did, uh -huh. because I, I really went deep with this character. Sure. Apparently, I'm transcendent. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, but you just you you feel right. you feel the whole. Yeah. Talking about it. I know. I know. Sorry. Did you? Oh, my eye. All right, cut. Oh, my other eye. Was cut. that right? No, you were sniffing it in through. What? <laughs> uh, well, it's a tremendous uh, bit of acting, and uh, we've always known that you're um, unbelievably funny uh, on the big screen and, and certainly in television, God knows. But this is uh, a whole different deal for you, and, and uh, congratulations. Thanks. It's a great joy to watch this movie, even though it is, it is dark, but it's such an unusual story. You feel like, oh, thank God I got to see this, because I'm telling you, at the time, it seemed so complicated as to not be, um, uh, you couldn't figure it out. But yeah, now, I felt the same way. I, I saw the story, but, and then it disappeared as quickly as it came on. Right, and, and uh, a, a sad ending. But where the, was the thing filmed? Outside of Pittsburgh. So it was filmed near the DuPont home? In the same general region, yeah. I hope you brought a clip, my God. Yes, there was a bring clip. bring clip? Yep, the clip is, I meet, my character is meeting Mark Schultz for the first time. Uh, this Olympic gold played medal, by. played by Channing Tatum, mm -hmm. who and he is fantastic in this movie. Um, Yahoo! <laughs> exactly. I, um, a, he's this... in a singlet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and playing Dave Schultz. And playing Dave Schultz is Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, and he's one of our uh, finest friends, actors. Yeah. Um, I, there's a scene in the movie, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm giving something away. I just loved it where you, uh, John Dupont, slap. Uh, Channing Tatum and call him an ungrateful ape. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I've done the same thing to him. <laughs> Here it is, Foxcatcher. Are you going to enjoy this? Do you have any idea who I am? No. no. If some rich guy calls you on the phone. I want Mark Schultz to come visit me. Well, I'm a, I'm a wrestling coach, and I have a deep love, the sport of wrestling, and I wanted to speak with you about your future, about what you hope to achieve. What do you hope to achieve, Mark? It's a great film. Thanks. It's uh, everything you want in a movie and a tremendous performance. Thanks. Uh, I mean, we always get a tremendous performance from you, but this is a whole different uh, branch of, uh, uh, well, I've run out of words. <laughs> My performance has left you speechless. That's it, exactly. <laughs> Go see it. You'll love it. Thank me later. Steve Thanks. Carell, Thank you. congratulations. We'll be right back with Mark, Martha Stewart. It was so peculiar that it kind of evaporated. And now you're the star of that uh, story in, in movie form. And the movie is tremendous. You, you're, glue, you're glued to your set and to the screen and you, your performance. And, and how did you decide this was a movie you wanted to do? I, I wanted to work with Bennett Miller, and I wasn't campaigning This is the man who directed it. He was the director. He directed Moneyball. Mm -hmm. He directed Capote. And I, he's a great director. And I was offered the part. I met with him. We discussed it, and I was offered the role. I don't think I was on anybody. I wouldn't have thought I was on anyone's list to play a part yeah. like this. Well, no, 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 don't be offended by this, but have you really serious, uh, straightforward role like this? in your movie career uh, not to this degree yeah. no not this dark um certainly i mean this th it was a really troubled guy and i'd never played a real life person either so that was different yeah
And he was a real life person. Yeah. And, and uh, no, I mean, like a character, like he's like someone I could study, someone I could look at tape and try to emulate and try to uh, pick up cues as to. Well, what it's they a were great like. job because uh, for there's not a second you don't believe you're looking at the guy, oh, which thanks. is uh, you know all you can hope for for the price of a ticket. That's by nice God. of you. Thanks. And and uh, uh, well, to take people. Uh, Take people through the uh, through the story. Uh, it begins. Uh, we know there's trouble the minute we see you, because we yeah. can, what what was your assessment of the man's? Uh, he was troubled by things. He was. He well. He was the heir to the Dupont fortune. He grew up in this enormous house uh, outside of Philadelphia. Essentially, just he and his mother, who by all accounts was a chilly woman. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of love. He, his parents divorced when he was two. Um, and his siblings were much older, so he was by himself. So he, he was not a very adept uh, person socially. And uh, as he grew older, he was just, it, it was sad. I mean, he, he did terrible things, but I had empathy for him at the yes. same time. Because, well, uh, well, you know, what was his guy. preoccupation <clears throat> with uh, Olympic wrestling? Where, where did that come from? Well, he was a sportsman. You know, he, he liked to surround himself with athletes on his farm, Foxcatcher. They had swimmers and uh, and 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 people who, who participated in, in you know uh, horse racing and and those type of sports. And he loved wrestling in particular, I think, because it was not a sport of the elite. It, it was it was a very simple, a very basic sport, a very ancient sport, and it was a sport that his mother did not condone at Considered all. Considered it to be a low sport. She did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and and uh, uh, the uh, your co-star in in the film uh, and it, it, based on the t the Schultz brothers, right? Uh, Dave and and Mark Schultz, right? Both uh, Olympic gold medal winners. Yes. Right. And it took place in in Pennsylvania, and it involved <clears throat> the Dupont family. I didn't know much about the DuPont family except that they were involved in synthetic fabrics and, ch and chemicals and, and an old, old, wealthy industrial family. Right. Uh, and I, we heard about this uh, wrestling camp and a, a guy got shot and it was one of those things that was so peculiar that it kind of evaporated. And now you're the star of that uh, story in, in movie form and the movie is tremendous. You, you're, glu you're glued to your set and to the screen and y your performance. Uh, and, and how did you decide this was a movie you wanted to do? I, I wanted to work with Bennett Miller. And I wasn't campaigning This is the man for who it. directed it. He was the director. He directed Moneyball. Mm -hmm. He directed Capote. And I, he's a great director. And I was offered the part. I met with him. We discussed it. And I was offered the role. I don't think I was on anybody. I wouldn't have thought I was on anyone's list to play a part yeah. like this. Well, no, 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 don't be offended by this, but have you really serious, uh, straightforward role like this in your movie career? Uh, not to this degree. Yeah. No, not this dark, um, certainly. I mean, this, th it was a really troubled guy. And I'd never played a real life person either, so that was different. Yeah. <laughs> And he was a real life person. Yeah. And, and, uh, no, I mean, like a character, like he's like someone I could study, someone I could look at tape and try to emulate and try to uh, pick up cues as to. Well, what it's they a were great like. job because uh, for there's not a second you don't believe you're looking at the guy, oh, which thanks. is uh, you know all you can hope for for the price of a ticket. That's nice God. of you. Thank and you. and uh, uh, well, to take people. Uh, <laughs> take people through the uh, through the story. Uh, it begins. Uh, we know there's trouble the minute we see you, because we yeah. can, what, what was your assessment of the man's, uh, he was troubled by things? He was. He, well, he was the heir to the DuPont fortune. He grew up in this enormous house uh, outside of Philadelphia, essentially just he and his mother, who by all accounts was a chilly woman. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of love. He, his parents divorced when he was two, um, and his siblings were much older, so he was by himself. So he, he was not a very adept uh, person socially. And uh, as he grew older, he was just, it, it was sad. I mean, he, he did terrible things, but I had empathy for him at the yes. same time. Because, well, you know, what was, what was his guy. preoccupation <clears throat> with uh, Olympic wrestling? Where, where did that come from? Well, he was a sportsman. You know, he, he liked to surround himself with athletes on his farm, Foxcatcher. They had swimmers and, uh, and, and, and people who, who participated in, in, you know, uh, horse racing and, and those type of sports. And he loved wrestling in particular, I think, because it was 
not a sport of the elite. It, it was it was a very simple. <laughs> it was packed full of fake yeah. cocaine. But how do you zero in on the straw to get it in the fake nostril? Because you know where your own nose is. <laughs> but but now you're dealing with an application. You know what? That's an excellent question. <laughs> And in all, in all the research that I did, uh -huh. because I, I really went deep with this character. Sure. Apparently, I'm transcendent. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, but you just you you feel right. you feel the hole. Yeah. Talking about it. I know. I know. Sorry. Did you? Oh, my eye! All right, cut. Oh, my other eye. Was that uh, right? No, you were sniffing it in through... What? <laughs> uh, well, it's a tremendous uh, bit of acting, and uh, we've always known that you're um, unbelievably funny uh, on the big screen and, and certainly in television, God knows. But this is uh, a whole different deal for you, and, and uh, congratulations. Thanks. It's a great joy to watch this movie, even though it is, it is dark, but it's such an unusual story, you feel like... Oh, thank God I got to see this, because I'm telling you, at the time, it seemed so complicated as to not be, um, uh, you couldn't figure it out. But yeah, now. I felt the same way. I, I saw the story, but, and then it disappeared as quickly as it came on. Right, and, and uh, a, a sad ending. But where the, was the thing filmed? Outside of Pittsburgh. So it was filmed near the DuPont home? In the same general region, yeah. I hope you brought a clip, my God. Yes, there was Did a bring clip. bring clip? Yep, the clip is, I meet, my character is meeting Mark Schultz for the first time. Uh, this Olympic gold played medal by. played by Channing Tatum, mm -hmm. who and he is fantastic in this movie. Um, Yahoo! <laughs> exactly. I, um, a, he's this... in a singlet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and playing Dave Schultz. And playing Dave Schultz is Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, the, and he's one of our uh, finest friends, actors. Yeah. Um, I, there's a scene in the movie, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm giving something away. I just loved it where you, uh, John Dupont, slap. Uh, Channing Tatum and call him an ungrateful ape. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I've done the same thing to him. <laughs> Here it is, Foxcatcher. Are you going to enjoy this? Do you have any idea who I am? No. no. If some rich guy calls you on the phone. I want Mark Schultz to come visit me. Well, I'm a, I'm a wrestling coach, and I have a deep love, the sport of wrestling, and I wanted to speak with you. About How do you make sure you get it? You know what I mean? That, that nose was full of a lot of fake cocaine by the end of the night. <laughs> it was packed full of fake yeah. cocaine. But how do you zero in on the straw to get it in the fake nostril? Because you know where your own nose is, <laughs> but, but now you're dealing with an application. You know what? That's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> and in all, in all the research that I did, uh -huh. because I, I really went deep with this character. Sure. Apparently, I'm transcendent. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you just, you, you feel, right. you feel the hole. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about it. I know. I know. Sorry. But did you, oh, my eye. All right, cut. Oh, my other eye. Was cut. that right? No, you were sniffing it in through, what? <laughs> uh, well, it's a tremendous uh, bit of acting, and, uh, we've always known that you're, um, unbelievably funny uh, on the big screen and, and certainly in television god knows but this is a, a whole different deal for you and and uh, congratulations thanks it's a great joy to watch this movie even though it is it is dark but it's such an unusual story you feel like oh thank god i got to see this because i'm telling you at the time it seemed so complicated as to not be um, uh, you couldn't figure it out but yeah now. i felt the same way i i saw the story but and then it disappeared as quickly as it came on right and and uh, a, a sad ending but where the, was the thing filmed outside of pittsburgh so it was filmed near the dupont home? in the same general region yeah. i hope you brought a clip my god yes there's a, a clip yep the clip is i meet 
My character is meeting Mark Schultz for the first time, uh, this Olympic gold played medal. Played by? Played by Channing Tatum, mm -hmm. who, and he is fantastic in this movie. Um, Yahoo! <laughs> Exactly. I, um, a, he's this... in a singlet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and playing Dave Schultz. And playing Dave Schultz is Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, the, who and is he's one of our he's, finest friends, actors. Yeah. Um, I, there's a scene in the movie, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm giving something away. I just loved it, where you, uh, John Dupont, slap uh, Channing Tatum and call him an ungrateful ape. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the same thing to him. <laughs> Here it is, Foxcatcher. Are you going to enjoy this? Do you have any idea who I am? No. no. Some rich guy calls you on the phone. I want Mark Schultz to come visit me. Well, I'm a, I'm a wrestling coach. <laughs> 